Welcome, friends, to our time of scripture reading and devotional reflection for Sunday, November the 13th, 2022. My name is Brian J. Monroe, and I'm pastor of Kitimat First Baptist Church in beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia. This uh, recording is coming to you from my office there. As it says in the description below, please consider liking and uh, following and sharing this content on YouTube. As it is Sunday, there are four readings for today from the Revised Common Lectionary. And then, of course, as always, there will be uh, a reading, uh, a devotional reading. We begin with our semi-continuous reading from the Old Testament, from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 65, verses 17 to 25. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that case which I create, for behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. Nor, no more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit, it, inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall enjoy the work, shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord, and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. The dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. And now our psalm, which doesn't come from the book of Psalms, but rather from the book of Isaiah, chapter 12. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. And now from the New Testament, we read from Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians, from the third chapter, verses 6 to 13. Now we commend you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother or sister who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us, because we were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but with toil and labor we worked night and day, that we might not bur be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have the right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. 
For even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him or her not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now, such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. As for you, brothers and sisters, do not grow weary in doing good. And now, from the New Testament, the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 21, verses 5 to 19. And while some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And the disciples asked him, Teacher, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And Jesus said, See that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified. For these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. Then Jesus said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and pestilences, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it, therefore, in your minds not to meditate beforehand on how to answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and sisters and relatives and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. This is your almighty and everlasting word, Father God. May you be praised for the good and gracious, generous provision of it to us. And grant us, through the power of your Holy Spirit, the ability to not only hear these words, but to understand them and to have them move deep inside us in our minds and hearts and spirits and achieve what is your good purpose in our lives. To your glory we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now from Oswald Chambers, my utmost for his highest, we read today's entry entitled Faith and Experience. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The letter to the Galatians, chapter 2, verse 20. We have to battle through our moods into absolute devotion to the Lord Jesus. To get out of the hole and corner business of our experience into abandoned devotion to him. Think who the New Testament says that Jesus Christ is, and then think of the despicable meanness of the miserable faith we have. I haven't had this or and that experience. Think what faith in Jesus Christ claims that he can present us faultless before the throne of God 
unutterably pure, absolutely rectified, and profoundly justified. Stand in implicit, adoring faith in him. He is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. How can we talk of making a sacrifice for the Son of God? Our salvation is from hell and perdition. And then we talk about making sacrifices. We have to get out into faith in Jesus Christ continually. Not, not a prayer meeting Jesus Christ, nor a book Jesus Christ, but the New Testament Jesus Christ, who is God incarnate and who ought to strike us to his feet as dead. Our faith must be in the one from whom our experience springs. Jesus Christ wants our absolute abandon of devotion to himself. We never can experience Jesus Christ, nor ever hold him within the compass of our own hearts. But our faith must be built in strong, emphatic confidence in him. It is along this line that we see the rugged impatience of the Holy Spirit against unbelief. All our fears are wicked, and we fear because we will not nourish ourselves in our faith. How can anyone who is identified with Jesus Christ suffer from f doubt or fear? It ought to be an absolute psalm of perfect, irrepressible, triumphant belief. Almighty Father God, how can we be afraid? How can we turn and look at the world and allow it to guide the way we react and respond when we have your Son, Jesus Christ, who conquered death, who conquered Satan, who conquered sin, who conquered all the things that bring to death and dissolution, and who rose to life and shares that eternal life with us. May we look deep into your Son every day and see that there is life and truth and that we will not fear but that we do fear you lord for the fear to, fear of the lord is the beginning of all wisdom and leads to a life of righteousness peace and truth we pray this to your glory father god in the name of jesus christ amen again friends I thank you for sticking with me till the end of this recording. Thank you for spending some time in God's Word today. I pray that this is touching you in some way and moving in you in some way and shaping you in some way to be a better follower of the Lord Christ. And until we can be together again to do more of the same, I bid you, in the name of Jesus, Shalom.